Hey, welcome to Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're going to make a very famous old southern dish called the Country Captain. Y'all stay tuned. <laughs> So I was reading through this book here. This is uh, Country Cooking. This was published by uh, Callaway Gardens. And um, it had a recipe that really intrigued me called the Country Captain. It's a famous recipe. Um, a, a very well-known hostess back in the day, w, Mrs. W.L. Bullard, served this to uh, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt and a party that he had brought through uh, Columbus, Georgia area uh, back during his presidency and it must have been pretty good because now it's pretty famous I was actually uh, doing a little search on YouTube here this morning just to see how many people other people that have done this uh, recipe on YouTube and I found you know Bobby Flay okay Bobby Flay and you know Mrs. Dean she had to do it too so they all had it on TV but none of them we're out here in the backwoods with some Dutch oven cast iron. So that you know that's the way we're going to do it here. Okay, I'm going to apologize in advance for all the noise you're going to hear in this video. Uh, you know, we did have a big hurricane here over the summer. People are getting new roofs, and that's the case back uh, back behind me somewhere right now. You're going to hear that nail guns going off repeatedly. First part of this meal, uh, you're going to need two chicken breasts. Now, the original recipe in the Country Cooking Book uh, says that it was originally made with a whole chicken, but for smaller portions to use the breast only, skin off, bones in. So we got bones in, skin off. And first thing we're going to do is uh, just season them on the outside a little bit with salt and pepper. Okay, And then we actually have uh, some flour here to dredge them in. And that also has some salt and pepper in that, so I'm only going to put that on one side. And, of course, you know, I immediately go to making a, a mess of everything, as usual. So we're just going to dredge them real good in the uh, seasoned flour. And then we're going to brown these off in lard. So I like to let them set a little while prior to doing that, and then the moisture from the chicken will soak into that that flour and help it stay on on them better. So the first uh, first part of this dish is browning off the chicken and some of the veg and today we're going to use a new product sent over to us uh, by the great folks at Avalon Bay. This is their uh, induction uh, hot plate and this is a great little item you know um, remember if you watched uh, top 10 tips for outdoor cooking always have an alternate heat source well today we're going to use this one and it's a great little item if you're camping most campsites now have electricity this thing uses very little power and can run off a regular 110 power so if it's a rainy day or you know you can't get your fire going uh, or you're stuck out you know where you really can't uh, get any wood or, or charcoal or anything like that going then you always have this little guy and it works best with cast iron. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn on the induction burner. It's all touch screen too by the way. Um, very light touch on it. I'm going to go to temperature which is two taps of the button over here. Then it has a readout here and it's saying right now 300 degrees. We want to probably go to 355. That'll be a great uh, browning temperature. Remember we're not cooking these all the way through. We're just going to brown them. One thing I've noticed about this uh, little induction burner, this thing gets hot quick. Way hotter, way faster than um, like propane or you know, anything less than a campfire. I mean, it gets hot fast. Uh, I actually recommend for using, if you have an induction hot plate like the Avalon Bay here, to actually um, use your newer cast iron with it that doesn't have that smoke ring. The better contact uh, the pan has with the actual uh, surface of the induction cooker, 
or it the better it works um, you know it's a magnet magnetic induction that's being transmitted into the pan so the better contact you have with the bottom with the with the hot plate the better it's more efficiently it's going to work so we're going to give that just a second to come up to temp and then we're going to brown off these chicken breasts well, I, d I didn't even need to shut off the camera there because I don't, I've already seen some little uh, smoke coming up off the oil. Just going to go ahead and lay these guys in here. And uh, here the other thing about induction is the surface of the unit does not get hot. Just like your induction cooktops um, that a lot of modern kitchens have now. That leads me to the other thing I wanted to tell you was... Hey, if you're remodeling your kitchen, you want to get yourself an induction cooktop. None of your old aluminum pans are going to work. But these cast iron pans, they work perfect. It's been a few minutes. Let's go in and give it a check. I did bring the uh, lid over to keep it from splattering everywhere. That's looking pretty good. Go ahead and cover that back up. Alright, so let's go check on our chicken here. The other thing I noticed about using this induction burner is your lid and your pan um, don't get as hot. So, try to get it brown on all sides. I'm just going to kind of keep flipping it and brown it on all sides. One, one last side to go. Meantime, we're going to start getting together. The next ingredients to go in, this is uh, one bell pepper, one small onion, and one clove of garlic. Alright, it should be browned off now. Open that slowly. Smells awesome. Alright, we're going to take the chicken out and put it on a plate over to the side here. Got some aluminum foil on it because the recipe says to keep this hot. So we're going to take it off. We actually turned down the uh, power on the induction burner here, also. Back to 300. So here's our chicken. So we're just going to go ahead and just uh, wrap it up in aluminum foil. Fairly tightly. That'll also help uh, carry over some heat and cook it uh, a little further in. So if you guys watch the uh, Backwoods Gourmet regularly, you'll know that we are not big on using recipes. We're big, pretty big on making up our own. Here we are following the, uh, the cookbook from the original recipe. And the reason I'm doing that is, is you know, it's supposed to be historical. So trying to recreate the uh, first dish there. That's onions. It calls for a whole bell pepper, a green one. In fact, I've chosen red uh, and half because uh, Mrs. Backwoods doesn't really like green bell peppers. These are a lot sweeter to red ones. And it says in the recipe to slowly cook these in the juices from cooking the chicken. As you can see, we have some of those bits on the bottom of our pan. And this is the actual, uh, the secret to the dish's success, uh, quote, from the cookbook. Okay. So, actually, I'm going to kick that down to about 250, and we're just going to sweat these. That's our next uh, step down on the burner, is 250. This smells awesome already. Let those uh, go for a minute, and then we'll start seasoning it. So now that the uh, veggies have picked up most of the goodie from the bottom of the pan, recipe says a teaspoon and a half of salt, but we cut the disc in half. That's about three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Three good pinches. It also calls for white pepper. Now white pepper can be 
very bitter if you get too much of it in a dish. It called for half a teaspoon for the full. I'm gonna go a quarter teaspoon of white pepper. Okay. So we cut that in half also. Quarter teaspoon. And curry powder. Three teaspoons is what the original one says. A tablespoon or a teaspoon and a half. I just measured out in my hand. I like that. I've already tested this curry, it's pretty tame. Go ahead and just uh, keep stirring this. It says stir it continuously. I don't know how you can stir it continuously and put the seasonings in. You see that curry is bringing over a beautiful color, for sure. And now I'm starting to smell that flavor, you know, that, that aroma coming from the curry. Let's let that go a few more minutes. Let's look pretty awesome. Next step is coming in with uh, one uh, pint of our canned tomatoes. It's aromas. A little fire roasted on those. Alright. And the recipe calls for parsley here. I don't have any. I thought I did when I went to the market this morning don't think it's going to be a big deal uh, and it does call for some time we're just going to shake a little time over the top no need to really measure that a little ground time that's ground time too not time leaves I'm sure you could use fresh time though we'll put all that together we'll let it come up to a simmer and it's going to be time for the Dutch oven portion of this dish. All right, I'll show you one little thing about these induction type cooktops. It's probably the same with the, uh, the indoor ones. If you take the pan off, it knows that there's no uh, connection between the pan and the, and the machine. So if you move this around too much or it's not in the center enough, here we pulled out the old uh, BSR stew pot. This recipe calls for rice for the serving part of it. So we're going to go ahead and get that hot, and I'm going to show you. I've turned this thing up to 400. I'll show you. We just put that on there. you just seen it. Uh, how fast this will actually bring up the heat. I mean, that's almost immediately, okay? And it will bring that water to a bowl very quick. And I'll show you my little trick for making some very savory uh, rice for a dish like this. So if you're making a rice for a chicken dish and you don't want to water your chicken dish down, get you this product right here. Better than bouillon. About that much on the end of a tablespoon. Dissolve that in your water. But do not, do not put any salt. This does have uh, enough salt in this bouillon. You can also put a dry uh, chicken broth cube in here also. It won't dissolve as fast, and it certainly doesn't taste as good. But that little better than bouillon will bring over enough uh, salt with it, along with the rest of the dish. So, try to help some of you guys out that uh, need a little bit lower salt in your diet. Okay, so that's literally taken like one minute to boil a pot of water on a cast iron. One cup of rice. Give it a quick stir. We're going to turn this thing down to 250, which is low simmer. I'm going to grab this nice little cast iron lid. It seems to be covered in pollen. Everything out here is covered in pollen today. It's just way, way, way thick. Pines, oaks, everything that makes pollen is spitting it off right now. There you go. 20 minutes. Perfect every time. Alright, so that's how we uh, use a little induction cooktop. Um, I don't use it a lot, but I tell you what, some days I come home, you know, it's uh, pouring down rain, really want to do something out here on some cast iron, and I'm out of propane. It's really coming handy, I'll tell you that right now. So if you want to try to get one of those uh, 
to use in your, uh, your RV or in your camp gear, I'll leave you the link. And I, um, sure, there's a great discount code right there on the link. Alright, I'm going to set up a uh, Dutch oven for $350. Using Kingsford here, so this burns out pretty quick. So that's kind of work out in our advantage here because we had a 45 minute cook time. We actually made these coals are so small already, we may have to add a few more. We're using the 10 inch lodge. Let's go ahead and get that on there. Load up the lid and get it preheated. It's going to fill up the edge of the rim there. Dutch oven set up 350 cooking. The recipe just says moderate oven, it doesn't call out a temperature. So, here, uh, that's, that's hot, I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of cooking spray just because this is, you know, it's gonna be a, a, a tomato dish going in there that's uh, kind of acidic and likes to eat your seasoning out. Let's go ahead and put our uh, chicken breast right in there. I'll pour that juice, collect it in the foil. Don't want to throw that away. And right in with our tomato curry mix. Just, just dump it on the top. And that's what we're going to do. And we're going to add enough water covered about halfway. Guys, uh, coals, these Kingsfords, they burn out fast. You know that. You can use them. Uh, we just went and checked on that chicken. It's uh, beautiful tender. Now I gotta work on the sauce. So before we take chicken breast out, we're going to bring over about 8 or 10 coals, maybe a little more for some bottom heat, and we'll put the Dutch oven back on top, we'll get it up to a boil. Let's go ahead and take the, uh, the lid off. Those coals are completely burned out. We'll set that to the side. Man. Does that look awesome or what? So if you like to buy some of the gear that we use right here on the Backwoods Gourmet channel, please check out our link in the first comment to our Amazon store. We have a store there with all kinds of cast iron, Dutch oven, grilling, and outdoor cooking gear there for you. So I just tested those uh, cranberries, see if they were done. Time to come off the fire. So it's time for the plate. I'm still following the recipe book. It says put the chicken in the middle of the plate first. And uh, so that's what we're gonna do. We're, we're serving this up uh, family style. So we're gonna put both of our chicken breasts in there and we got this beautiful broth. It's in that bottom. A little piece out of there. All right. Now it says to uh, put the rice around the side. So here's our cast iron cooked rice, and they, you know, again on the recipe it says to, to cook it dry where every grain is separate. And I think you could probably classify that as separate grains of rice they're cooking. Good old cast iron here. off our chicken so we can see our chicken. I don't know if uh, Franklin Delano or Roosevelt back in the day had this pretty of a plate, you know, or not, but so now it's time for the sauce. So let's get ready for that. I'm gonna change the camera angle so you can see that great. So we're coming in with the sauce now, that curry, curry tomato and berry sauce. Beautiful. It's 
smells awesome. I'm telling you that right now. I'm just gonna spoon that over the rice. You know, it's got that that red currant, currant jelly in it too. That's a pretty awesome looking dish right there. And uh, here's another thing that they call for in the recipe that I actually had to make. And that was toasted, blanched, and skinned almonds. Just sprinkle that all over them. Because that's going to add some texture. And they said, uh, you know, garnish with parsley. I don't have it. But there's some... Uh, fresh green scallions right out of the garden. I already tested that sauce. Let me tell you what, it's pretty damn awesome. So, there you go. Hey, that uh, country captain was pretty daggum good, I tell you that right now. But I, I got a little message for Paula Dean and Bobby Flay. Back with gourmet version was a whole lot better. If you like what we're doing, please hit that like button right down there. To subscribe to our channel, you can do it right here. To see another great video from the Backwoods Gourmet, it's right up there. And for a whole playlist, cast iron Dutch oven cooking, it's right up there. We'll see you next time.